In this video, you're going to see a deep sea volcano, and you're also going to watch a giant creepy shark captured on camera. And finally, you'll discover the deep sea dragonfish and why it's often called a ferocious predator. A plastic bag. Okay, so I'll fully admit, not the most exciting way to start off our deep sea venture here, but hear me out, okay? The reason that this one is a bit more shocking is because it was found in such a dark and secluded place in the ocean. I mean, sure, the global onslaught of plastic pollution is very relevant, so it wasn't exactly a shocker for divers to discover tons of plastic, though. A retired naval officer who completed the deepest solo underwater dive discovered in the deep the plastic bag at about 35,000 feet down in the ocean. While he searched for unique wildlife like other researchers, he couldn't help but notice several of these plastic bags littering in the trench. According to him, the plastic bags resembled the ones given away at simple grocery stores. This is also said to be the deepest known piece of plastic trash found at the depth of 36,000 feet in the Marianas Trench. While he did find other bits of debris, this was the most whole piece that he had found. Honestly, if the plastic pollution problem is getting so bad that it's being found in the Marianas Trench, it's getting pretty bad in general. Whale Fall As you already know, the whale is one ocean creature that you can find pretty much anywhere, in the high seas and the deep seas. That being said, does anybody here know what a whale fall is? It's not some species of whale or a whale breaching and then falling back into the water. No, it's the decomposing remains of a dead whale. This carcass gets classified as a whale fall when it goes 3,000 feet deep in the sea. It serves as an adaptive radiation hotspot for specialized fauna, and that's not all. With it being able to create specialized fauna, it also serves as a specialized ecosystem for a lot of the actual creatures there. Rather than feeding on the whale, the decomposing remains become a sort of very morbid coral reef. On top of that, it serves as a place of evolutionary novelty, sheltering species first found on the bones of dead whales. These creatures became used to living in the extreme environments of the deep sea-like cold regions in intense darkness. Whale falls were first observed in the 1970s, following the development of deep sea robotic exploration. Ping Pong Tree Sponge of all the creatures captured in a deep trench of over 2,000 feet, the ping pong tree sponge is going to shock you the most. It's a tree looking sponge that belongs to the family of carnivorous sponges, and that's far from what you'd expect from, say, SpongeBob. This creature looks like it's covered in ping pong balls, funnily enough. Interestingly, it also reaches about 50 centimeters in height and is mostly composed of thin stalks. It also has stems at the top that radiate through the central part of its body. And despite all of these weird adaptations, it's also a flesh-eating creature that's mostly found at depths of about 9,000 feet. The globules it possesses help capture its prey for a sumptuous meal. And despite the beautiful soft looks of these globules, they're actually covered in tiny hook-shaped spicules. This means that whenever an unlucky crustacean passes by and accidentally brushes these globules, they get trapped inside the tiny spinecules. As the prey continues to struggle, the cells inside the ping pong tree sponge move towards it, consuming it alive. Sounds pretty ruthless, huh? To be fair though, in the Marianas Trench, this is actually pretty tame. Deep Sea Volcano It's no news that volcanic activity takes place in the ocean. While most of them go undetected, they're also not uncommon. The Marianas Trench is probably the best area for sea-wide eruptions, and it saw an eruption of the world's deepest undersea volcano over in 2015. This was observed by a group of researchers who ventured into the deep sea. They were about 2.8 miles below the ocean's surface, when they saw an eruption just spreading molten magma into the surrounding ocean. As the hot magma met the ocean, it started to cool off rapidly, resulting in a vast field of volcanic glass that reached for four and a half miles under the sea. This is pretty typical after an eruption in the sea. It takes a few years before organisms can colonize these areas, creating new ecosystems for themselves. The Brittle Star The Marianas Trench has left us shocked on our tracks as it plays home to some of the more bizarre creatures on Earth like I've said before. Named for its delicate, spindly limbs, the Brittle Sea Star is a deep-sea animal known for crawling across the seafloor using its flexible arms for locomotion. They're a member of a group called Ophioreids, a species closely related to starfish. This animal has five long, slender, whip-like arms that are capable of reaching 60 centimeters with each whip. There's actually over 2,000 species of Brittle Stars in existence, and over 1,200 of these species are found in deep water, rarer than 200 meters deep. While it does use its arms for locomotion, its movements aren't that vast. It's been observed using snake-like movements, simply just walking on its actual legs, or anything like that. 
It feeds on plankton, small mollusks, and even fish. It does this by raising its arms when the fish get close enough and wraps them in a spiral and devours them. Creepy Giant Shark In the deepest part of the ocean, a giant shark was captured on camera. Turns out it was filmed miles down, beyond the reach of sunlight. Now, sharks are common creatures found in the deep, but this 50-foot scary-looking shark footage shocked the entire friggin' world. It was caught stalking the depths of the ocean, and while it's unclear what its actual size was, it was measured based on the length of the cage it swam over. While many simply assumed it was a Pacific Sleeper, the length of the creature ruled it out. A Pacific Sleeper shark grows to only about 20 feet, and this one seemed to be far larger than that. While this person has their own theories, most people have simply jumped to the conclusion that it is indeed a Megalodon shark. And granted, it is pretty big, so hey, might have some merit to it. Predatory Tunicate Commonly called the ghost fish, the predatory tunicate is one of the more disturbing looking creatures from the deep sea. The creature is a species of tunicate living just on the deep sea canyon walls and sea floor, and unlike other tunicates that filter feed, this creature is adapted to becoming an ambush predator. It has a mouth like a siphon that closes quickly when a tiny crustacean or a fish accidentally swims inside. What it does is to open its wide mouth to lure fishes or tiny crustaceans who float unsuspectingly into their cavernous hoods, and by the time that they realize that they're trapped, it's far too late. It's sort of like how a Venus flytrap catches a fly. These weird little creatures live at depths of 3,000 feet in the Monterey Canyon, and they have the special adaptation of being a hermaphrodite with a body size of roughly 5 inches. It can reproduce by itself as it produces eggs and sperm that drift into the water. The predatory tourniquet is a beautiful sight to behold, if not a little disturbing. And now it's time for the day's best pick. We've actually talked about this one a few times, but it doesn't hurt for a little refresher course. The Deep Sea Dragonfish The Deep Sea Dragonfish is another bizarre looking creature found in the depths of the deep sea. It's a ferocious predator of a deceptive size. First look at this animal from a distance may not scare you, but a closer look most definitely would. It has the face of a dragon, and the deep sea dragonfish uses its fang-like teeth to lay hold to its prey. Its teeth are actually quite long for its face, and as such, they're also perfect for keeping their prey tethered. They also use bioluminescence and flashing lights in the dark waters to lure their prey. It's definitely one of the more capable predators in the water, and hopefully you won't get to meet it anytime soon. Mariana Snailfish Described to look like a ghost of the abyss, these sea creatures are the deepest fish to ever be brought up from the deep sea. The Mariana Snailfish is a white, pinkish-looking creature known for its smooth skin. From their looks, you'd think they aren't that strong enough for their habitat. However, these sea animals have successfully lived in such extreme environments for a good amount of time. Scientists actually discovered that it differs significantly from other fishes and very well survives in the depths of the Mariana Trench. In fact, they've actually adapted to go deeper into the sea than any other discovered fish at this point, at about 26,000 feet. These creatures, much like ping-pong tree sponges, feed on crustaceans and shrimp. Reaching up to 28.8 centimeters, it's a top predator in certain areas of the Mariana Trench. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal, you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. The Vampire Squid Another returning entry, the Vampire Squid is not exactly what one would expect. The Marriott Trench itself is a pretty dark, lifeless hole, but it does play home to some of the most bizarre creatures you can think of, and the Vampire Squid made it to this list purely on its looks. It's a small cephalopod found in the temperate regions of the ocean, in extremely deep sea conditions. Because of its unique nature, this creature has been separated into its own group by scientists. Often called vampire squids from hell, this animal has eight arms, massive blue eyes, and two tentacles. It's darkly colored and looks more like an octopus than it does a squid. While it has a ferocious name and a scary look, this creature isn't as wild as other creatures in the deep. Rather than feeding on crustaceans like others, it collects and feeds on drifting particles called marine snow. It isn't as picky when it comes to its food, and thankfully it doesn't need as much. This works out because while it may not feed on its fellow sea dwellers, it still has a hard time getting some food. Getting proper food in the deep sea is very difficult, so it needs to grasp onto every bit it can get. See you all next time!